Hi there, my name is Mike Manson and the team here at Simon Lucas Motors would like to congratulate you on the purchase of your stunning new Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross Plug-in Hybrid. Today's video is going to be how to set your vehicle up and run through all the vehicle's features. Please note, the model I'm focusing on today is the VRX. We do the XLS model as well. But as I go through the presentation, I'll point out the differences between the two models. One of the really nice features on the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross Plug-in Hybrid, it comes with a smart key system. This is proximity based, and it's both for the VRX and the XLS models. But just to demonstrate, the keys normally got to be 70 centimeters from the vehicle. So if I put the keys in my pocket, if I'm approaching the vehicle, there's a little button on the door here. If I tap that, I can tell the vehicle's unlocked because my side mirrors come out. If I want to lock the vehicle, I tap that, and my side mirrors will come in. Always a good sign to tell you that the vehicle's locked. And then the tailgate. So if I come to the rear of the vehicle, I unlock the big button that's situated in the middle, just below the Mitsubishi logo. If I tap that, the vehicle's unlocked. If I close the tailgate, push the little button on the right hand side, the vehicle's locked. And we can tell this because once again your side mirrors are in. Right, so let's get you set up so that you can enjoy your driving. Right, so the first thing you want to do is get your seating position set up. So in the VRX model, we've got an electric driver's seat and passenger seat. In the XLS model, we've got an electric driver's seat. So if I want to get my seating position set up, this button here is, moved, is used to move the vehicle forward, back, up, down, and we can also tilt it. And this one is to get your rear set up. Once your seating position is all set up, we then move to the steering column. So on this vehicle, there's a lever on the left hand side. If I push that down, you'll note this vehicle's got telescopic steering. What that means is I can actually move it in, out, up and down. So I'm just going to get this set up to my drive style. And then once I'm happy, you lock it into place. Right, if we look at the driver's door panel, you'll notice that here we've got your central locking as well so we can actually lock the vehicle from inside the vehicle unlock it this is obviously your electric windows if you have got children in the vehicle and you don't want them playing with the windows well we can push that button down nobody can open up these windows here which is the rear and the passenger side but as a driver you will still have control of your main window the other thing is when it comes to your adjusting of your side mirrors of your vehicle this control system here will take care of that for you so if you want to adjust your left side mirror you make sure you push the l down for left you get your angling set right when you want to move to the right position you go r get the positioning right and you can also bring your side mirrors in if you're in a very confined space by pushing this button on the right hand side Right, now if I want to get my seat belt on and adjust it properly. So what I do is get my seat belt in and the last thing is I can actually adjust it here and move it up and down. And for my setting, I'm quite comfortable there. Snug as a bug in a rug. Right, now to set your vehicle up with the safety features. So with the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross Plug-in Hybrid, on the left hand side here we've got our power button. Now you don't necessarily want your vehicle running all the time. So if you're in a scenario where you just want to listen to the radio, if you push the power button once, that'll give me access to the radio. But you'll notice there's no airflow, etc. If I tap it again without my foot on the brake, I've got access to my air conditioning, my windows, etc. To start the vehicle, your foot always has to be on the brake. And when you push the power button, it'll say ready. Your little gauge will move into the EV mode. Your vehicle is now running. Right, the next thing you'd want to set up, a really important safety feature, is your forward collision mitigation, which is on the right hand side here, and you'll see it's a, a picture of a vehicle with a star. Now there's three settings on this vehicle. We've got a fast setting, a mid setting, and a near setting. Now, how that operates, forward collision mitigation, is actually a preventative measure. It prevents you driving into the back of somebody should you lose concentration, or you're not focusing on the road. Your radar is situated up here. Now when I do my test drives, I find the further sitting settings very sensitive because your radar is actually out like this. So it's picking up everything. The mid setting brings it in slightly, 
which I find is a really good way of driving the motor vehicle. This system over here is your lane departure warning, which is situated next to your forward collision mitigation. If we activate that, what that does is if you're driving and you're just drifting onto the solid lines, etc., the car will just say lane departure, lane departure, letting you know that you are drifting. The vehicle also has blind spot warning indicators. These are situated in the side mirrors, in the corners. Basically what that means is if you're driving and you've got a car coming in your blind spot, if the car's in your blind spot on the right hand side, well in your side mirror on the right hand side is going to glow in a bright orange colour. If it's on the left hand side, it will glow in a bright orange colour as well. Not only has it got blind spot warning indicators, but also rear traffic alert. What that means is if I'm in a shopping centre and I put the car into reverse, and I'm backing up. Sometimes you've got two big utes next to you and your visibility is not good. If they start flashing and the vehicle says in front of you on your dials, rear traffic, it means it's not safe to back up. There are cars coming from the rear. Then this button over here is your traction control. That's always activated. You can deactivate it by holding the button down longer than three seconds, but I don't recommend it because it's one of the big safety aspects of the motor vehicle. Check this out, one of the really nice things here is if you have got a load in the back, right, and passengers, and let's say for example it's interfering with your headlighting position, we can actually adjust the headlights of the vehicle to get them to move up and down. And how we do that is by adjusting them with this button down here. Right, just to point out that your fuel release button is on the floor on the right hand side close to the door and your bonnet release is under the dash on the right hand side right so on the vrx model has got forward sensors and backing sensors one of the really nice things if you're putting on a genuine mitsubishi tow bar and let's say for example you've got your trailer on there's nothing worse than putting the car into reverse and all you hear is this continuous beep so we can actually deactivate the backing sensors by pushing this button over here. One of the really nice things in the VRX model when it comes to comfort and convenience is that the VRX model has got heated front seats for both the driver and the passenger and that's accessible from these two buttons over here. We've got a high setting and a low setting. Not only has it got heated front seats, it's also got a heated steering wheel which is awesome and also for passengers in the back the VRX model's got heated seats as well. And this we activate by pushing this button over here. So another really nice thing that you want to get set up, which is all about your comfort, is your dual climate control. Very easy to operate. If I tap AC, it will activate your air conditioning. You'll notice it's dual climate control. A really cool thing here is I could have my temperature running at 26 degrees and my passenger maybe 21 degrees. Another nice thing is this here is your fan speed. This will be de demist the front of the vehicle, demist the back of the vehicle, circulate the air within the vehicle, and then your modes here will show you where your air conditioning is facing. And if you want to block the air con off, very easy just by locking that into place. Right, your vehicle will also come with rain sensors and, uh, and light sensors, very easy to activate. So on the right hand stalk here is going to be your light sensors. There's a little dot, you can notice at the moment now it's on off. All you're going to do is turn that dot onto auto and that's your automatic headlights activated. It's also got your fog lights and how I demonstrate that is on the left hand side of the stalk here, we just operate this switch here and that's your fog lights on or off and when you're driving at night if you tap the little button on the stalk that symbol comes up that's your automatic dimmers which is really nice so if you're approaching a vehicle your headlights will dip down and if that vehicle turns off they'll come back on again on the left hand side of the steering wheel your left hand stalk you'll notice that we've got this lever here this is for your automatic rain wipers if the stalk's sitting in the middle it means it's activated to automatic which means if it starts raining, your, your wipers will automatically come on. You can override that by doing it manually, just by tapping the lever down. For your rear windshield wipers, you'll just turn this control on the left here, and that's your windshield wipers for the rear. When it comes to your display unit here, if you want to adjust your lighting up and down, make it bright or dim, very easy to do. Little button on the right hand side here, and by tapping that, you'll notice it's becoming dimmer or brighter. 
A really nice feature on the VRX model is your heads up display. Just to show you how that works, there's a little button over here. If I push that here, you'll notice my heads up display is popping up. This is really nice if you're driving because everything, for example, my kilometers per hour, if I'm using my adaptive cruise control, everything will be displayed on the screen in front of me. Please note, we can also get it set to perfect eye level by adjusting it up and down and we can make it brighter or dimmer to suit your needs. A really nice thing is if I, for example, activate it once, that means every single time I start the vehicle, your heads up display will come on. If you don't want to use it, we can obviously pop it down by pushing this button here. And that just means every single time you start the vehicle, it won't be popping up. Right, when it comes to your onboard computer, both models will have the system here. Very easy to operate. You'll notice on the right hand side here, we've got two arrows and then a little control button in the middle. If I tap my arrows down, that's going to be my trips. If, I want, if you want to reset your trips, all you're going to do is just push the middle button down and that's reset. And as I scroll through it, if you want to open up all the settings on the vehicle, just tap the middle button. We can either reset everything to factory settings. We can also calculate your driving range, blind spot warning indicators, which are on, turn signal sounds, reminders. You can change languages on it as well. So this is obviously set to English. Temperature, if you want to change it from de degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit, you can. Your average fuel consumption. If you want to go back to the main screen, you just tap the middle one. And as I scroll through here, that's your super all-wheel drive control system. We'll get into that a little bit later. That just shows how economically you're driving because the leaves will start filling up. That's a really, really nice way of driving this vehicle because as you can see here, we've got a little symbol of the battery of the vehicle, the wheel and the engine. And that'll show you when the engine's clicking in or when the battery's feeding the wheels or regeneration when the wheels are feeding the battery. That'll give you your average liters to 100 kilometers. That's your combined range between your motor and your charge, and obviously back to your trips again. Very easy to understand, no complications. Right, on the VRX model, a really nice thing is we've got the 360 degree camera. Now, how to activate that is as follows. On the steering wheel here, there's a little button that looks like a camera. If we push that, you'll notice that we've got an aerial view of the vehicle and we can see everything in front of us. If you never want to scuff your front left wheels, if you tap the camera again, there's a down shot of my front left wheel. So if I turn the steering wheel, I can actually see my front left wheel. You'll also notice the yellow lines will tell me where my wheels are facing. If I tap the camera again, it takes us back to your audio system. If you want to change the color of the vehicle, tap the camera, hold the camera button down, and you'll notice on the left hand side there, I can now scroll through to the color of your vehicle. This one's blue, so I'm gonna lock it in. Now this should be set up at the point of delivery. When you come in to pick your vehicle up, come in with your favorite radio stations and we'll help you get everything set up. But I'll show you how easy it is. We can either do it manually by scrolling through here. A really nice way of doing it though is going to your station list, right? Update it. Now it's going to pick up every radio station in this area. We can then scroll up and down. So let's say, for example, you want to listen to the sound. Tap the back arrow, hold it down, and now we've got the sound. I can operate everything from the steering wheel. So you'll notice here's my volume control. So that's taking my volume up. That's taking my volume down. And if I want to scroll through the radio stations, all I'm going to do is push my arrow to the right is going to take me down to the left is going to take me up and wherever it's displayed in blue over here it tells you that's the radio station that you set on a really nice thing on our sda system here that you can do the vehicle's got android apple carplay and that's for the vrx and the xls model so if you're running an iphone or an android this is how easy it is to operate i'm going to take my usb cable i'm now going to put this into my usb port here and always enable on my phone it'll just ask me to activate apple carplay that's like my home button screen very easy to operate so let's say for example i want to send my son a message it's nice and early in the morning so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to push the talk button I'll wait for the bing send connor manson a message what would you like to say Hey boy, it's dead. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. 
Your message to Connor Manson says, hey boy, it's dad, wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, it's sent. A nice thing is if my son sends me a message back, it'll go to a four over here, tap that and the car will talk the message out. Let's say, for example, you're going on holiday and you're just looking at convenience, right? And you don't know where you want to stay. I can push the talk button and say, hotels and motels. One option is Carnwell Hotel Takapuna on Rioti Avenue. Now is that the one you're looking for? It's giving me all the hotels here. I can now scroll down. And let's say I want to go to Sai Motels. I can tap there, push go on my maps. Starting route to Say Motels. And to exit, I can just go out like this. For convenience as well, you're planning a little trip tomorrow. I can, for example, go, what's the weather like in Wellington tomorrow? Looks like rain in Wellington tomorrow. The high will be 11 degrees and the low will be 7. How convenient is that? So I'm, my recommendation to you is when you're driving, make sure that your Android or your Apple phone is linked up to the vehicle. Nice, convenient driving. Right, if you want to make a phone call, very easy. I'm going to try to call my son, but I'm going to hang up because uh, he's a teenager and probably still fast asleep. So all I'm going to do is push the talk button on the steering wheel. Call Connor Manson. Calling Connor Manson. And if I want to hang up, I'm just going to tap the right button here. You can see the phone's on the hook. And if somebody's phoning you, it'll say incoming call. What you're going to do is just push this button in the middle, which is the phone off the hook, which means answer. One of the really nice things about the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross Plug-in Hybrid is a lot of clients ask me, how do I really know what the car's doing, all right, and how much I'm going to spend on a charge, and can I charge off-peak, and can I set timers, etc. Really easy to operate. On our SDA system here, you can see here it says PHEVN information, so that's got anything to do with electric and fuel side of the vehicle. So if I tap that, right, if I start off at the top, you'll notice here, the first one we're going to see is energy flow. There's a really clear diagram of the vehicle. Now just to summarize for you, when you're driving and you're using pure EV or pure electric driving, you'll notice that the battery will be feeding the wheels and it's shown by a line going down and you'll actually see it feeding the wheels. When your petrol engine clicks in, you'll notice the petrol engine will be charging the battery and feeding the wheels. And if you're on motorway driving, for example, your petrol engine will, will click in, it'll burn in bright orange, it's assisting the front and then also building up charge at the same time. If you want to, for example, look at your energy monitor, you can, for example, look at uh, your instant fuel consumption um, and also the, uh, your, your charge amount. And as you scroll through here, there's a lot of things that you can actually look at when it comes to the vehicle. So that's your EV driving, so it gives you your percentages. Fuel history. So every fuel consumption, electricity consumption, power. We can go back into here. This is a really cool feature because a lot of clients ask me, you know, can we set the car to charge off peak? Of course you can. Now how you do that, this screen would open up, you hold that down. And you'll notice here we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you can basically put your charge cable in. If you want the vehicle to start charging, let's say 9.30 at night, you'd go your start time and your end time. With your end time, it's not a problem because as soon as the vehicle's fully charged, it'll cut out anyway. And then you've got your climate control as well. So if I hold this button down here, we can actually, for example, Let's say you're going to work at six o'clock in the morning and you want the car cooled down. Um, you can obviously do everything from this setup here as well. So in other words, your start time and your operation time. The last thing on the menu is your charge amount. So basically what the car can do is calculate how much you're spending charging and you can do that over the long term and the short term as well. If you look at the center console here, you'll notice that we have got a different control panel. If you want to be driving in EV or electric mode, you just push the EV button and you'll actually see it displayed directly in front of you. So I can activate it on or off. Then you've got your control panel and next to that you'll see there's a button that says save and charge. 
So let's say for example I push save. I might have a range of let's say 30 kilometers in the vehicle, I'm going into the city, I can actually save my 30 kilometers EV, operate the petrol engine which is building up charge and when I get into the city, I can then go to pure EV driving again. If I want to charge the vehicle up, I can also push the charge button. You'll notice here on this diagram now, you can actually see that my engine has started up and is now charging the battery. I don't necessarily recommend this because this part of the process is actually using fuel to build the vehicle up. I highly recommend that you use your charge cable because remember, the more you charge, the more fuel efficient you're going to be. One of the really nice things on the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross Plug-in Hybrid, and that's the VRX and XLS model, right? Is we've got our drive modes. This is a super all-wheel drive control system. So let's say, for example, your driving conditions change, right? There's a button over here, which is your drive mode. So everyday driving, I recommend eco mode. So basically the car is gonna be in the best economic stage it possibly can. We can then change it to normal. Snow, if, for example, you're going up to Mount Rapeo, grab or tarmac. You'll notice that when you change these settings on the move while you're driving, the car's behavior will change slightly, and that's because it's also working on the regeneration side. The other nice thing is, clients ask me, how can I get more out of the vehicle? Well, every single time you tap the brake, the car's turning kinetic energy back into electricity. So another really cool feature is this, if, if you're operating your vehicle and you're coming on a downhill, so on your steering wheel, right, just behind your steering wheel, we've, we've, we've got two pedals. The left one's got a minus on it and the right one's got a plus on it. So just to give you an idea, if, if, if you're on a downhill and you want to get something more out of the vehicle, right, build up a bit of charge while you're driving. If you take your foot off the accelerator, your engine braking will come in or, or regenerate a braking. So if I pull the left pedal towards me, you can see it goes B3, B4, B5. So you can actually feel the car kind of slowing down, but it's turning kinetic energy back into electricity. And if you feel it's getting too slow, you can then release it slightly by going from B5 to B4, to B3, to B2, to B1. You can hold it at B0, which is not doing anything. And to go back to normal drive, you just hold the right column in for two seconds. One, two, and we're back to normal drive. So if you have a look here, you can actually see when my foot comes off the accelerator, it's green, right? So there's kinetic energy, we're building back electricity. If I pull my left pedal towards me, you can actually feel the car slowing and the right one's releasing it. So this is a really, really good way of utilizing your regeneration side. I really strongly suggest that you try to use your regeneration side as much as possible because you're gonna get more out of the vehicle. But when it comes to you picking your vehicle up, your sales consultant will do that with you and he's probably explained that to you in the test drive as well. Right, when it comes to your Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross Plug-in Hybrid, I just wanna show you how to operate your gear lever. So your stalk here will always be in the middle. To find drive, you just tap it towards you, down and leave it, that's drive. If you wanna put the car into reverse, you tap it towards you up and leave it. The nice thing was when you go into reverse, you'll notice your camera system will come on straight away. So if I put the vehicle into drive, you'll notice here's my electronic handbrake. You push it down, it's deactivated, pull it up and it's activated. One of the really great features in the VRX and the XLS model is the auto hold. So if I tap auto hold, you'll see that my orange lights come on. The nice thing though is you'll notice that here there is a, a, a green symbol that says hold. That just means I can actually take my foot off the accelerator or off the brake and the car's going to hold in place. So if I'm on a very steep uphill and I'm now pulling away, I know that I can do that comfortably and conveniently without rolling back. So in the VRX model, a really nice feature is adaptive cruise control. What that basically means is if let's say I'm driving and I set the car to 100 kilometers per hour, right? I then take my foot off the accelerator and if the car in front of me slows down to 80, 60, 40, this car will automatically slow down and holding the distance that you've set. And how that works is from your radar, which is all activated at the top here. Just to show you how that works, I tap that button there. You'll notice that I've got settings here, this control button here. That's my further setting, and you can bring it closer. And once you get to the speed that you're happy with, you just tap it down to set, and then you remove your foot of the accelerator, and the car will do its thing. Then we've also got a limiter set, right? So for example, if I tap this little button underneath your set button, you'll notice it says limit. 
minimum 30 kilometers per hour, right? So now it says 30. So let's say I'm in a built up area and I don't want to go over, call it 40 kilometers per hour. I can drive the car normally, but when I get to 40, you'll feel it's almost governed at 40 kilometers per hour. You can override that by putting your foot flat down on the accelerator and obviously hitting the brake. Now to adjust that, I can either go up in one increments and if I hold it, it's gonna jump up in fives. Please note that adaptive cruise control is only found in the VRX model. The XLS model will have normal cruise control as well as your limiter set. In the VRX model, we've got a sunroof and at the back, we've got a panoramic roof. So just to show you, if I tap the button on the right hand side here, we can actually open up the screen. I can then also open up my sunroof. And at the rear, we've got a screen here as well. So on both models, right, we have your reading lights situated here. We've got the main lights for inside the vehicle. And if it's sitting in the middle, that just means when your door opens, your light will come on. When your door closes, it goes off. And then obviously in the center here is for the rear. My sun visors on both sides. I can actually, they've got nice lighting as well, which is really, really cool. One of the really nice things in the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross Plug-in Hybrid is when it comes to passenger comfort. It's really nice to know that the vehicle has got ISOFIX points, but if you've got passengers in the rear and they, and they want to just adjust this back part of the seats, you can. There's a lever at the top here, and I can actually pull it up and just stop it at different intervals, which is really, really nice. And I can also fold the seats down flat. Now this is a 70-30 split. It works on this side as well as the other side. And for the middle here, you'll notice that there's your cup holders for your passengers. Right, another nice convenient thing is here's your um, kitty locks just to make sure your kids are safe and they can't open up the door while you're driving and you just activate that by putting it on there. On your Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross Plug-in Hybrid, the VRX and the XLS model, please note it doesn't come with a spare wheel but if you open up your tailgate all you've got to do is just lift this little compartment up over here and you'll notice there's a compressor and some liquid. Basically, if you get a puncture, you pump, put that liquid into your wheel and you'll use your compressor to pump your tire up. Here's your wheel jack spanner and everything you'd need to get that job done. There's also a really good storage compartment here for your charge cables, both your fast charge and your normal trickle charge from home. Right, when it comes to charging your vehicle, just from your normal plug point at home, all you're gonna do is tap this here and it'll open up the cap. The vehicle has to be unlocked to do this. You're then going to take your charger. Note the one on the left hand side is just for home charging. That's going to slot in. And the right one here is for fast chargers. When your vehicle is now fully charged and you want to remove the cable, all you're going to do is pop this lever back, take it out, make sure the cap is closed and just tap that in. Right, for those long distance trips, there's nothing wrong with preventative measures. Nice and easy, I'm just gonna pop the bottom and show you what to do. Right, so what Mitsubishi's gone and done, just those little checkpoints, anything with a white cap, right? So that's your windshield reservoir water right there. That's your engine oil over there. And this is your coolant. Just check those levels before you're going on a long trip. Right, just remember, we've got the best warranty in the marketplace. So your Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross Plug-in Hybrid is going to come with a 10-year, 160,000 kilometer powertrain warranty, 5-year, 130,000 kilometer new car warranty bumper to bumper, 5-year, 130,000 kilometer roadside assist, also your 8-year, 160,000 kilometer battery warranty. Please make note of this, your vehicle has to come in at one month or one and a half thousand k's, whatever comes first for its first checkup. Now, in this time, it's a really good time for you to get to understand and know your vehicle. And when it comes in on the checkup, the team here just wants to make sure that everything's working the way it should be working. After that, your vehicle is due for its servicing every 15,000 k's or a year, whatever comes first and it has to be done at our dealership or a Mitsubishi dealership to hold the warranty. But the team here at Simon Lucas Motors would just like to say thank you so much for your business. Thank you for choosing us. 
and we all wish you many 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 happy hours ahead of you with your motoring and obviously it's going to be a very cost and fuel efficient way of driving thank you so much